you folks. <coughs> Ariel over here at Finith, where today what we are going to do is install that B nucleus or the nuke that I picked up a couple days ago into its brand new hive. So if you use a nucleus that uh, is in a, a box and on frames that are the same size as the hive you're putting them into, this is super easy. You basically pick each one up carefully, set it inside your new hive, and you're done. Boom. Very easy. Of course, that's not what I'm doing. So the hive you're looking at there that I just picked the lid off of, I figured I'd come back and narrate this later because I didn't want to try to do this while thinking about the bees at the same time. That is called a horizontal hive. You can find free plans to build your own at horizontalhive.com. Um, but the reason I settled on that was I did a lot of reading about beekeeping in cold places. Of course, it is a cold place here. Here we are almost the middle of May, and it is snowing outside as I record this yet again. And so I did a lot of reading on people mostly keeping bees in northern Canada and in Alaska because those are the two main places that have very similar climates to ours. Now, you can see and it just went past there uh looked like a very active healthy um nucleus when i opened that box up that was good to see and what i'm doing here is giving them a little bit of smoke on the surface just to encourage them to back down off the ends of those frames so i can pick them up without accidentally squishing any bees anyway um after doing a ton of reading and research on people who are successfully overwintering bees in other very cold spots like alaska and so on uh, one of the keys seems to be really good insulation now the standard little stacky box hive that you see everywhere you've probably ever seen a beehive in this country is uh, called a langstroth hive that is what this nucleus frames are made to fit in. So again, if I had one of those, I'd just pull them out of here as I'm about to do. I had to cut through a little bit of the propolis, which is like bee cement that they make to, to seal things up in their house so that I could get the, the frame loose to pull it out. Um, and I would just set them into the new hive. Very, very easy. But those hives are generally not made well insulated, though some people have come up with insulated versions and so on, but they generally aren't good for that. And there you can see how they haven't really done a whole lot. They've built out comb on that side of the frame, but haven't done a lot of work. And on that side, you can see a bunch of bee brood, which is baby bees they're raising and so on, some little honey up in the corner and so on that they've stored. Anyway, it was really exciting. I wanted to pull these frames out and see, you know, what I'd, what I'd actually bought in that box and see how they looked and see if I did have a, a healthy looking colony and a queen and so on. But anyway, to accomplish getting them into the hive, I've selected as my best guess from everything I can learn as being a good one, especially for our climate. Now there are people using horizontal hives in much warmer climates as well, for sure. But for our climate, this seemed like a really good option. This is built like a little frame house almost with insulated walls. They've got wool insulation there, an inch and a half deep and so on. So. Hopefully that's going to work out being good hive. But so now the complicating factor here is that I needed to transfer one size of frame, which is too narrow and too long, into the other size of frame, which is wider and deeper. And there's a whole ton of research into uh, why that seems to help bees winter better, especially in cold places, which is you know key for us. And um, I do recommend checking out horizontalhive.com. has tons of free info and free plans. Dr. Leo, who's the one behind that, does uh, a lot of seminars and such. Um, I got to listen to him speak in person at a conference a bunch of years ago now. And I know he does uh, beekeeping classes at his place, which is in Missouri, which is not nearly as cold as here, and so on. Anyway, uh, that's an excellent research source. He also has a, a few books, and I read quite a few books on various styles of beekeeping as well. And, and the general philosophy behind the book, Keeping Bees with a Smile, I'll link to both Horizontal Hive and that book down below here, but um, it lines up with my approach to life and my own life and health and all of our other animals and such. So that's what we're going to attempt to, to do here. So what I'm doing here is I'm just pulling each frame out because when I got 
home um this is actually the next morning after i got the bees home there was a little window where the sun was like halfway out and it wasn't raining or snowing and so i wanted to be sure that everything was okay in there and they weren't going to starve to death right away actually visually see that they had some food that there was a live queen and so on so that's what i'm doing here now ideally i would have been also able to install them directly into the new hive at this time that is not how this worked you can see i'm just setting the the frames i've already inspected over there where um they're out of the way so i can pull the the others without interfering to check on them but i wasn't actually expecting to get this colony right then i had been too busy all winter dealing with other things the normal time if you want to order something like a bee nuke is probably to be ordering back in like january i had not done that i figured i was probably out of luck for even getting one this year my first choice was actually to catch a wild swarm that's what i would have loved to have done and i tried last year i had two swarm traps out i did not think my chances were super high i have never ever in this area seen a wild bee swarm ever and i do spend a lot of time walking around the woods and looking at wildlife so in some areas that's fairly easy to do i wasn't very confident that i'd have much luck here and i did not now i'm going to put those swarm traps out again this year we'll see if i i get lucky and find one or catch one but i i did not last year so this spring i thought you know i really would like to have some bees this year if i can so I found the, the closest person to me because I'd like to get bees that were raised in as similar a climate as possible um, and contacted him to see if there was any chance he had any left. And he said, yes, I do. Somebody just canceled an order. He was hitting the road the next morning to be um, uh, meeting people at several drop points. That's what you saw in the last video. I only had to drive a few hours to go meet him and pick these guys up. And so that worked um, pretty well. But anyway, it meant I had one day's notice that I was actually getting these bees. And so that meant I wasn't as fully prepared as I should have been. That of course would have been partially under my control. What was not under my control was the weather that we have had since I picked these guys up. So for the past six days now, it has snowed, rained, blown, or been in the teens Fahrenheit, so way below freezing, uh, pretty much every single day. So where I'm inspecting the bees here was a, a warm, break for just a few minutes so i was able to check on be sure they were okay and i did give them both a a pollen patty and some uh, watered down honey in a feeder to eat because i knew they're looking at the forecast they were not likely to be able to be out and about doing any foraging for food in the next you know few days so i i did not want them to starve to death uh, before that but they did have some honey stored in there and on this frame that I'm pulling out here, it was really exciting. I got to see the queen. So we'll talk lots more about bees in future videos, but a hive is mostly made out of sister bees that are all workers, they're all girls, a few drones, which are the male bees whose only job is to mate with the queen and reproduce more babies, and the queen, which is the one that lays all the eggs. So worker bees, um, you know they actually have fairly short lives varies a little depending on the time of year but they they come and go regularly but if you don't have a queen your hive is going to be in trouble so it was really exciting to me when i pulled this frame i could see the queen actively working as well as bees actively hatching if you look close there you might even have to pause the videos too bright outside and looking through that bee mesh i couldn't uh couldn't see where the camera was very well but there are bees actually chewing their way out of their little cells and and hatching or emerging and the queen was also kind of in the middle there um, i don't know if you could pick her out she's a little longer and wider than the rest of the bees mostly longer anyway so it was good to see her looks like a healthy queen looks like a healthy hive and then what i basically did was just put these um, frames back in their nuke box because I couldn't just drop them into my hive the way it was set up and set the entire box into my hive for the next few days. So they were still in their, their container they were already used to, but they could get used to coming and going from the correct door location of their new home. So that's what you're going to see me do here. After I was sure that they, you know, had a had a live queen and weren't going to starve to death, we just put the entire nucleus in the horizontal hive, and then it went back to snowing. So that's how we left it for several days.
few times. A couple of bees would come outside and kind of cluster on the side out of the wind or around the entrance, but for the most part it was too cold and I almost never saw any of the bees even want to leave their hive during that spell. yesterday in between the blizzards the sun actually came out for a while in the afternoon it warmed up and got up to like in the 50s and I thought okay here's my chance so I'm going to actually transfer them to their frame because I didn't want them to get too cold or too disturbed so I did not want to do this while it was blowing and snowing sideways and all of that so now what I'm going to do is transfer the wrong size of frame into the correct size and there are several ways to do this you can find various videos of people doing uh, different methods and um, you can actually chop the comb out and press it into the new frame you can saw right through the middle of the frame uh, current frame and screw it into the wider one the option that we picked because I thought it would be the least stressful to me and to the bees was to simply build a uh, kind of frame converter that allows the extra long frames to hang in there sideways so clay built all this for me because he has all the carpentry skills which is wonderful because making this all precisely fit is not my skill and he set it all up with all the screws preset and pre-drilled and everything there so that I could do this easily because dealing with the bees is not so much his thing so he made this quite simple for me I had to put this riser on there because those frames even when inverted are a little extra long and again there's free plans for this as well on how to do this on horizontalhive.com but um, I, I had to set this box riser on there to basically make the box extra tall temporarily and then uh, use the little conversion frames that Clay built for me and screw their existing frames into them so they can all hang in there together and over time they should slowly you know start to fill out and build on the new frames and I'll, I'll start to shuffle their existing ones back out of the area they're currently using and eventually those will get pulled out and then this riser could be taken off and they can go back to being in a normal horizontal hive but of the available options for how to transfer them from one size to the other this seemed the quickest and like i said least stressful for both the bees and myself so i made sure that was all seated down good and snug there on on their little bee box and then you're gonna see how we i didn't want there to be any gaps sometimes the screw doesn't seat quite snugly but it it did and for the most part they didn't seem too disturbed about this process i don't know if it helped that it still wasn't a really warm day i was actually kind of hoping i could do it on a a day that'd be warm enough that a bunch of the worker bees would be out foraging so there'd be less bees on the frames but that didn't seem to work and i wanted to get this done so they could be settled into their new spot and then it did you know snow again the night after i did this and it's snowing right now so i was glad i grabbed this this gap of time to do it so those are the correct size frames this is called a, a horizontal hive or a lands frame they're much bigger and wider and deeper and I'm not going to go into all that but there is a reason that that seems to work better for overwintering um, with less winter die-offs and I'm putting their feeder back in there because again I knew there's gonna be at least a few more days after I did this that didn't uh, didn't have any good weather for them to go find food on their own so normally hopefully I'm never gonna to have to do this again we'll see but hopefully this will be the first and only time I'm having to install purchased bees and and this will be very simple from here on out okay so now you can see what the temporary frame adapter looks like there. And these are beautifully and precision made because like I said, Clay did it for me and that's something he's very good at. They would not have looked like this if I had attempted to build them myself. I'm quite sure of that. Again, I'm carefully lifting a frame out of the nucleus and box and going to set it directly over the hive. So any bees that get knocked off or shaken off in this process 
drop into the hive and don't get lost in the um, you know in the grass or accidentally stepped on by me or anything like that. So you can see how he's got that little notch there that lets the the tongue of the other frame uh, fit into it. And then I decided here I wanted to actually use that one as my support and grab a, a second frame. It took me just a, a second here to figure out the most efficient, handy way to uh, make this really work. And I didn't want to squish any of the bees if I could help it while I was doing this. So I used some smoke to back them off that edge. And then I realized there's just enough of a gap there. There is like a bee gap on the side. So I didn't really need to do that because they kind of crawled right back and, and it was fine anyway. So I notched that in there. Again, you can find your own free plants if you want to do this and settle that in. And so now that has transformed with the riser on the box to let that extra length hang down that uh, existing Langstroth frame into a lens or horizontal hive shape that will hang in there neatly with all the others and allow them to keep using their current comb and brood and honey and pollen and all of those stores. Um, you can see there how when the screw set, it did bounce some bees off. This is why I wanted to do this directly. And there are a few more went. Um, wanted to do this directly over the hive so that anything that uh, fell in, and there I have to occasionally back a screw out and reset it because it didn't pull it up snug the first try. Um, some of them did, some did not. Anyway, I wanted all those bees to end up in the hive and not, not lost and out on the ground or me accidentally stepping on them. So that seemed to work pretty well. So this takes a while, but I basically just do this over and over with all five frames and then get them sandwiched into their new home with the correct size of frames around them for them to start working on uh, as, as the weather here eventually hopefully warms up and turns into spring and they can actually do some foraging and build new comb and store new honey and all of that good stuff. In an ideal world, I would have brought that nucleus home. I would have had these frame adapters already made and it would have been warm and sunny instead of cold and snowing. And I would have pulled them directly out of that nucleus box, done this the first day and had them settled into their new hive. That isn't how it worked because I didn't have my adapters done because I wasn't expecting to be told I could pick up a, a nuke that day. And because the weather was not conducive to doing this process either. So hopefully this will work and they will thrive. They still seem active and, and happy inside there. And again, and hopefully in a few days, I'll be able to show you pictures of warm, sunny weather and bees out actually foraging. So if you need to slow it down, I guess you can, but I figured you'd get bored watching me do this five times. I tried to do it as efficiently as I could, but I also wanted to, um, you know, be as gentle as I could with the bees. So it just takes a little time.
okay, that is the last frame. Now I have got all of the bees on their existing frames installed inside the hive. I have got some new frames on both sides of them, uh, their existing ones for them to work on. And as I said, over, over the course of the year, we'll eventually get them migrated out of their, the, the wrong frames and onto the right ones. And uh, now I just have to seal the hive back up. So this is sliding in a divider board because at the moment the colony is not nearly big enough to need all the space in that hive. So I'm going to make sure I don't squish any bees and then uh, close them into that end where they have plenty of space for now and hopefully as they become an active colony through the summer, we will need to back that board up and give them more frames to work on and build their honey on. But for now, we don't want to give them too big of a space that's, that's too big to work in and um, get lost in and all of that. So Friday, sliding that board in there, it got made pretty snug with the extra lip on there. And I actually had to add a little additional piece to make it, it seals so the whole top is closed on the hive, which lets the attic space up above it vent out and prevent moisture from building up in there um, without venting all the warmth directly out of the beehive. So anyway, they are now all settled up in there and we're just waiting for a sunshiny day to make them want to come out and start going to work for the spring. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have, uh, if you were just curious about what we did or if you are interested in transferring one hive style to another yourself, that method seemed to work pretty well so far and we'll check back in in the future. We hope you enjoyed it. Come back next time for more adventures. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.